so we have to Friday right, so next film right you guys have seen these films I haven't we're mm. gonna talk about Viceroy correct oh yeah. was that Wait. right very good get in Viceroy's house <laughs> yeah indeed we are now before we're gonna talk about that here's a tiny clip that's gonna gonna play for you guys now Ooh. 300 million Hindus and Sikhs want a united India but many of the 100 million Muslims do not the Muslim minority don't want to be part of India they want their own country, Pakistan. There's such rancor between the leaders now, it's nigh on impossible to get them in the same room. Well, whatever their differences are, all Indians have one thing in common. What's that? They can't wait to get rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nehru, sir. Mm. Mr. Nehru and some of the other leaders were kind enough to come and meet my plane. I asked them all to eat with us. It seemed the least I could do, I hope it's not inconvenient. Excellency. Good afternoon. Lord Ismay. My dear, dear Dickie. Pandaji, thank you for joining us. It is always a pleasure to be in the Viceroy's house <laughs> and not in his jails. You would not have needed to be jailed had you not been trying to undermine us as we fought the Nazis. We promised you help in return for independence. How could we fight Hitler when our own country was already under foreign occupation? Okay, so that was a film clip taken from Viceroy's house. It's out now. Now, as you may know, I am presenting the film show. However, I have not seen any film except for Logan. So this is kind of me in a pickle. If you have any questions, shout up. Okay. Yeah. Do you realise they've got to be basic questions? That's fine. All right. So, so what's this film about? Uh, well, basically, um, it's set in 1947 after Second World War's ended, and uh, why? <laughs> Just because. Well, <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> well, basically, there was a very bad man called Adolf Hitler. I know and that. Adolf know Hitler that. was defeated, and then yeah. World War Two ended. I know that, but why is it set in 1947? Well, I'll tell you. I was oh. about to get to that. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. less questions. So, uh, yeah, le less questions. More, <laughs> more listening. So, um, it was a British statesman uh, called Lord Mountbatten, who's played by Hugh Bonneville, and uh, sorry, yeah, Hugh, uh, it is Hugh Bonneville. It is yeah. Hugh Bonneville. Yeah, oh. sorry, I've, yeah, it is Hugh Bonneville, and uh, he is basically sent to India to serve as their last viceroy, which is basically the person who oversees the dealings of India's affairs, and he is charged with passing on the power of. India's government to uh, readily selected governments that India have chosen democratically. However, there's quite a lot of tension there because there are three different faiths all vying for their own needs and desires. There's the Hindus, the Sikhs and the Muslims. And obviously there's quite a lot of tension within that. Uh, the Muslims want their own state, Pakistan, while uh, Gandhi and a lot of the Indian followers just want uh, India to stay united as one state. So uh, you can tell it's quite a political film. Mm. And um, it's it does it's not dealt like that. I th I think I've seen the trailer for this. Yeah, you might have. I, it, it, for 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 a film that is is about really really harrowing circumstances and parts in history because the the I mean it's if you know history it's no spoiler to say that the Pakistan division does happen and there's a massive massive migration of millions of, of Indians it's and Muslims the largest mass migration in human history ever. yeah Ember. and uh, they, they, lots of people died because there was a lot of you know it, it, it was a horrible horrible time in history and it, it, the film's portrayed as a light comedy I wouldn't say for what? quite a lot of it I wouldn't say that for the first for the first a good portion of the first hour it is a light comedy. Like, it's about British people in a foreign land for about the first hour. And it is it is portrayed like a light comedy. It's it's very, very weirdly... The, the, the tonal shift so you from like that to The Division is... It, like, it becomes... It goes from, like, that to, like, a disaster movie. Like, oh, no. in, like it, oh, no. it is it is a really weird tonal shift. I didn't think it was very funny. Like, I oh, hang I, on, are we having our first debate? Yeah. I guess. No, 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 it was just... It was, it was just it was that the first hour it's the way the way it deals with it is is it's it's weird like the the, the they're trying to have you know they've got like the relationship drama in yeah. there and they've got like the this they're not making light of the situation it's just no. like other things that are happening in the story like they're not it's just the the, the, the there's a lot is of it, like it, humor and stuff it's just banner are they basically just saying like right we have a love story going on or well, by the way this major thing's happening but that's irrelevant well, right sort now of, yeah I mean like, it, it does try and spin a lot of plates at once it does try and be about three separate films so you even doing the motion of so yeah. what, I mean like having three plates to juggle is a lot well I mean I think, mm, it, I think it does have to I wouldn't say it's a comedy well Ma Manish Dial <laughs> plays one of the one of the, the, the workers at the thing but like it's, it's, I'm not, it's not a comedy because of the situation no, 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 it's I'm, a comedy I, because there is a lot of jokes and stuff in there and then when the division does happen and the situation's got very bad people start to die and the situation becomes quite serious like, yeah. and, and then the tonal shift is just like a complete 360 
60. Like, and it becomes a completely different film. I, d- I don't think the tonal... It's a very strange tonal shift. I don't think the tonal changes from light comedy to... I think it has... I think it's drama consistently, and it does turn it a bit of a disaster movie, but I think... Well, it, it is a drama, is, but like, there, there it, is it, the, the comedy is shift. definitely there. Okay. I, I noticed like, a few bits. Yeah. Go on. No, just, I was going to ask, are you basically saying that this film's like shift from ha, light and fun to like dark and serious and moody? I don't know what's just, I, it's I, a bit, I found it dark and moody throughout. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't personally see the... Then how did it, you get disaster just a, movies? It's just That's a bit, what I want to know. It's just it, a bit it, quaint. It, it, it does end up there. For the it, first it, hour? And it is a, it is a bit tween and a bit it's quaint. A bit, yeah, it's like for I'm, something of this... Ma- I, I didn't know the full details of this. And like the last the last half an hour was really harrowing. Mm. And then, like the the first, I was just like, "Is this a different film?" Do you think it's because of Hugh Bonneville? Do you think it's because yeah, because he's, he's, he's sort of like he's the, quite an the uppity, you know, like the nice man English chap. Well, the, the character, you know, tip tip, the character has no. been sent there because pip, he's. Did you just say pip pip? Tit tit, actually, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I messed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hugh Bonneville. <laughs> I mean, the, the the character is this kind of oafish. I mean, he's he's been sent there as a as a what's the term pansy, isn't it? Like he's, yeah. been, he's been sent there because he's, he's a, the scapegoat. He's a, he's a scapegoat. He's a deserter, and he's been sent there because they've kind of hung him out of dry. So I can sort of think that maybe the, you, you might think that because of Hugh one of it. I I certainly thought that somebody else might have done the role, mm-hmm. but then again, the role kind of suits someone like him who has just got that kind of pudgy, pudgy kind yeah, of face. Yeah, I get what you mean. Like, bless him. Like, yeah, he's got this massive Aww. job to do. Like he's been hung out of dry. Bless him. I think, like, the film, as most films that are in India and presented in this way with these big, lavish buildings, it looks like it was probably sets, which is quite cool, like, very constructed sets. Um, it's very visually arresting, lots of nice colours, um, lots of nice scenery. But, I mean, you're right, the, 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 the tonal shift and the fact that it is trying to be three separate films. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even mentioned the sort of the romance at the heart of the film. Is it all right? For the mo- for the most part, I wasn't that bothered about it because it, it it didn't know when to bring it in. It kind of felt like it was always a secondary or a tertiary. The third. One. It does sort of try to balance that sort of the romance story, the everyday life in the palace, mm-hmm. and the political tensions a lot within stuff. there. But like yeah, again, there's the spinning plates. But I don't. I mean, when I say disaster movie stuff, it's sort of like obviously there's a migration. A lot of it's people it, forced it, out of their homes. Yeah, it's like human. Disaster and like it's, a, it's like a human. It's like a, it's like a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a human disaster rather than being like you know 2012. I think it's broad. But, I think if you think about hidden figures as being a film yeah. very broad that told these sensitive topics but in a very crowd pleasing big 12A mm-hmm. kind of sense it does that same sort of thing not as well but certainly if you're going to compare it to something I would say hidden figures is something you yeah. can compare it to but the, the the sort of Romeo and Juliet kind of drama it falls in the background too much but I yeah. think what it culminates in at the end I actually found quite moving I did buy into quite a lot of the characters and I mean you can tell that w- the, the director Gwenda Chandish has clearly got a lot of investment in this because obviously What's by the it? title cards you see it's her story, it's yeah. her story. Yeah, you know, and, and you, can t- you can tell the passion behind this but I don't know I did like, I, f- I feel bad for not being more invested in this because it's a it's a really good story it's just I, I just felt it was really totally off mm. I don't know well, I knew nothing about this. Yeah, I, mean, I knew it, absolutely nothing about this. Since leaving school, it's the closest I'll ever come to a history or geography lesson. And um, I felt like I'd learned something, but didn't feel much yeah. more than that, which is a shame. Julie Anderson's good. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised to know that's <laughs> As her, his wife. That's her real accent. I always thought she was American because of X-Files, but she's yeah, actually, yeah, that's that's she actually speaks that part. Yeah. All right, then. Would really? you recommend this film or not? Yeah. 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 Did you not know? No, no. Is what? this a revelation moment between all of us? What, Julian yeah. Anderson's British? Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Well, lad. <laughs> you don't watch it, you never knew that? No, no, I, I, I thought she was American. Just, just stay in the corner.